yeast nutrients and understanding how this affects my finished wine has been something that I've been struggling to learn for a while. So my challenge is this. I'm going to make a video and break it down because I had to get to the bottom of this and it's taken me all week to do so. I'm going to make it so easy that you're going to understand it as well as you need to for home winemaking. And at the end of the video, if you don't, leave a comment. <laughs> leave me some hate for not delivering on my promise. So before we get into the yeast nutrients and which nutrient to pick, there are a couple of units of measure and terms we're going to use that I want to make sure that you have a clear understanding of so we're speaking the same language. First unit of measure we're going to talk about is parts per million and it's exactly like the name sounds. If we had 1 million pennies and we had a single dollar bill, we would have one part per million of one dollar bills. The next unit of measurement we're going to talk about is G slash HL or grams per 100 liters. Now to get the grams per liter, if we just take whatever the total unit of grams is, in this case here it would be 40, divide that by 100, that'll give us grams per liter. So we're also going to be talking about bricks, which is measured in degrees and is the amount of dissolved sugar in our solution. This can be also calculated using SG or specific gravity using a hydrometer. If you want to learn more about that, link is up top. And finally, the most important one we need to talk about is YAN, yeast assimilable nitrogen. It's nitrogen that the yeast can convert or use to help it convert the sugar to the alcohol, which is our end goal in winemaking. Okay, so next we need to talk about our different yeast nutrients. Now this is the first one that I ever bought that I started using. And if we look at the ingredients on the back, we see it's diammonium phosphate. This is just chemical. It is readily super available by the yeast. Uh, kind of like the same way that fast food is available to you. Now just because this is fast and easy doesn't mean it's the best food source available for your yeast, just like fast food isn't the best available source for your gut. Now the next product that you're probably gonna hear about right away is gonna be Fermade K. Now that's already better than DAP. And this has some organics in there as well, but it also does still have some diammonium phosphate or DAP as the cheapest yeast nutrient available. So it's better, not the best. And if you're looking for the cream of the crop, and this is the one I'm going to be using or talking about for the remainder of the video, and that is Fermato. This is, in Scott Lab's own words, the workhorse of yeast nutrients. This is totally organic, no chemicals in here. It won't fire off your fermentation as fast as DAP will, but it's going to be much more stable and smooth, which means better flavor in your wine at the end. The other thing that we also need to keep in mind is we can't just go buy a, a generic yeast nutrient like this DAP here and follow the instructions on the back because what this doesn't take into account is that different yeast strains need different quantities of yeast nutrient or yeast nutrient available in the must, different yam. Now the good news about this is we don't have to guess. The manufacturer of your yeast will tell you if it's a low, medium or a high yeast or a yan requirement and we can then convert that into what amount of yeast nutrient we're going to need later on. The manufacturer then also tells us exactly how much yan is required based on the yeast nutrient requirements. Okay so I know this has been a lot to digest. I promise it's going to be easy here in just a minute but we needed to get on the same page with what we're all talking about and have the same understanding. It's taken me three weeks of research to get us this far. We're almost there. Hang in there. All right, so if all that isn't enough for you here yet, let's throw nutrient timing into the mix just to add another one. There is what is considered a best practice, and that is a staggered addition of yeast nutrient through the fermentation process. That being said, however, I've been adding all my yeast nutrient right at the beginning, and I've had no problems with that so far. Going forward for myself in the future, I think I'm going to start doing the staggered plan just because there isn't much work to it and it's supposed to yield a smoother ferment, smoother ferments, 
uh, equal more consistent temperatures and better flavors in the end product. The other ideal thing is, is in a perfect world, we would have an exact measurement of the yam that's in our fruit mix or our juice, and we would take and supplement only what we need with uh, the additional yeast nutrients, and that would give us a perfect ferment. However, for us as a home winemaker to measure yam, it's uh, really tough and some of the chemicals are pretty nasty and it's pretty pricey. The good news is, is if we follow a yeast nutrient calculator, we can get very accurate results without having to worry about our starting yam and without worrying about going way too far over. Either too little yam or too much yam is gonna create off flavors. So by using a calculator, we can kind of stay in that nice middle, middle safe zone. All right, so if you've stuck with me this far, this is where we're gonna put it all together and we're gonna make it super easy. Here we go. First place we're gonna go to is uh, the Tosna version 3.0 calculator. Uh, this is available for you on Mead Made Right. And this is super quick and easy to use. Nothing is needed to download. We just need to take and put in our batch size in gallons or liters, select our yeast from the drop down menu. Uh, we put in our specific gravity of our fruit mix with our sweetened mix. You can add the specific gravity of the fruit as well if you're making a wine from fruit. And just like that, at the end, it spits out how much go firm you need, 7.5 grams, diluted in 150 ml of water, six grams of yeast or one yeast packet and the total nutrient that's needed is 18 grams and we selected our fermato at the top here so 18 grams of fermato and each nutrient addition staggered is 4.5 grams of yeast nutrient and if we go further down it'll actually tell you what that nutrient breakdown is 24, 48, 72 hours after yeast pitch, and the fourth and final one, uh, a third of sugar break listed above, or day seven. And it even tells you what the sugar break is. 1.056 hydrometer reading or lower, you can add the rest of your yeast nutrient. Now, this is fine, and this is great. This is already a really, really good calculator. There's only one problem I found using this calculator. And that's that not all the numbers match the Scott Labs 2024 winemaking handbook. So if I go to the Scott Labs winemaking handbook and the yeast that I just happened to find this on is 71B. It says that the yan requirement here is a medium. And if I go to the EC1118 over here, the yan requirement is low. Yet when I go to the Tosna calculator and I select the EC1118, yeast needed here six grams total nutrient 18 grams and if i change this to 71b i don't see a change reflected here as well so something to be aware of it doesn't totally free you up and that's where the last calculator i found kind of solved it all for me that's where this spreadsheet right here comes in we enter our specific gravity we enter our yeast nutrient requirement based on the manufacturer's website. They'll tell you if it's a low, medium, or high nutritional uh, requirement for the yeast. Now, optionally, we can enter the offset PPM if we know how much yen is inside of our fruit mix or our juice. Enter our volume of wine that we're intending to make or volume of our juice in U.S. gallons. If we're using Go Firm to hydrate our yeast, this is a four. If not, it's a three and don't uh, worry about the instructions. They're all listed on the side here and they're all listed up top as well if you're using uh, three nutrients and not just the fermato. And it'll spit out the total grams to add of yeast nutrient. The plus side of using this is you can toy with the yeast nutritional requirement. So one of the things that I'm starting to do is take a generic EC1118 wine kit and change the yeast on it. Well, if that yeast has a different nutritional requirement, it's pretty easy for me to do it here. If I go from an EC1118, which is a low uh, nutritional requirement, that takes 18.874 uh, grams of yeast nutrient. And if I go to a 71B, which is a medium, 
that's a 23.416, which is roughly uh, four and a half to five grams. Well, I know if I change the yeast now, I need to add between four and a half and five grams of additional fermato for that yeast to be happy for that fermentation. I will leave links to the spreadsheets, the Scott Labs winemaking kit, and any of the other resources that I have on my computer here that I've kind of accumulated over putting this video together. They are in the description of the video if you want them for yourself. So tell me how I did. Did I answer your questions pertaining to yeast nutrition and how to better make your own home wines? If I did, let me know. If I failed, also let me know. Give me a paddling. Ooh, you better believe that's a paddling. I've worked long and hard on this video to try to make it easy.